Good evening everyone, my name is Yahya and today I'll be using MATLAB program to draw a discretized kind of a waveform which is X of N then I'll be drawing an impulse response of a system which is H of N then I'll be utilizing a built-in function in MATLAB to compute a convolution between X of N and H of N which will result to the output of the system which is Y of N so before I start using MATLAB let me just uh, recall differences between a continuous and a discrete waveforms or discrete signals or continuous signals so a, a continuous signal would look something like this it's straightforward and a discrete signal would look something like this so you will have in transitions of integer numbers so sorry about that that's my battery now let's draw in the beginning the sequence which is x of n so I have here my my uh, uh, MATLAB program which is 2015 edition so what I would do is I would create a script so I would go and click new and I will hit this script now what I would do is the following as a good practice it's it's actually it's actually recommended to start your coding with two um, kind of like uh, uh, built-in commands clear and CLC it's not obligatory though but it is kind of highly recommended now special now this clear command will actually clear out the variables from the memory so um, when I for example execute this clear it will clear out the variables from the memory so why do I need to do that in case for example a previous program you use the variable X and you assign it to what to 5 so X equals to 5 okay that's good then later on in another program you actually define the same variable x but you use it as a matrix or a vector so this might confuse the compiler so that's why it's kind of recommended to clear out the variables from memory so unless you don't want to clear the variables from memory and you actually want to use them later on so you don't have to write this command but in case you want to actually clear out the workspace and clear out the memory from the variables with their values you will use this clear command now the CLC command will clear out the var they will clear out uh, the previous commands that you've been executed so it's kind of like cleaning things up uh, I mean there's nothing difficult about that now as I said earlier we have to know we are drawing a continuous or a discrete because if you are willing to, to draw a continuous signal you will use a built-in function called a plot but if you are willing to draw a discrete signal which something which looks something like this you would use a built-in function called stem so when I use a built function called, called stem and I open parentheses you could see that this is like the IntelliSend which is kind of like help me out you could see that at least you'll have to feed this stem function with a with one parameter y or at least or two parameters x and y so we'll go with the simplest one which is y but the thing is it's not just y I mean this y is not just any dummy variable it's kind of I mean written in a thick kind of way bolded kind of way which represents a vector so this y is not just any dummy variable it's a vector so that's a vi that's a variable which is a vector which contains multiple values so what does that mean in our case we are willing to draw this sequence which is x of n and you could see that at 1 at n equals to 1 you'll have a value of 2 at n equals to 2 we have a value of 3 at n equals to 3 we have a value of 4 and so on so what I would do is I could rewrite the sequence in a form of a vector so here is how I do it I could rewrite this as the following x equals to since this is basically a vector which is a special case of which is basically a special case of a matrix so I have to put it within a square bracket then what I would do is I would take the values of each uh, kind of at each uh, sequence so the first sequence at sequence n equals to 1 the, it, it is 2 so it, it's 2 space then I have 3 space then I have that's a 4 space then 5 then 6 and yeah that, that's about it now what I would do is I need to create this vector in MATLAB then and only then I'll be able to draw so here is what I would do before I use the stem function I will actually declare this uh, vector 
which is basically vector x then I will actually um, use the built-in function called stem and I'll pass to it the vector x then let's run this and of course it's asking me to to actually save it so let's say um, that's just uh, drawing some um, signals whatever and as you can see we managed to draw the signal quite well so at, at n equals to 1 it has a 2 at n equals to 2 it has a 3 and at n equals to 5 it has a, a value of 6 but so far we, uh, we, we, we can't see any labeling or or titles or whatever and, and more importantly we can't see any grid so let me show you how to add these kind of grids a grid which would look something like this you know it will allow us actually uh, visually it is kind of like um, appealing to some people so let me show you how to do that so let's go ahead and close this figure then I'll go to MATLAB the thing is after we want to stem or after we want to draw we need to add some sort of grid so you add a comma then grid and let's run this again now you can see that we have this nice grid which will show the values so at 2 you have a value 3 at 3 you have a value 4 and, and so on now what I would like to do next is to show you how to add some sort of labeling or titles because so far we don't have any titles or labeling over here so for example in this in this uh, example we had I wrote here a title which is X of N which is a sequence so let's do that uh, which is basically a title so simply a comma then I will write title sorry about that that's typo then a title you'll have to pass to it a string and awkwardly MATLAB accepts strings in a single quotation sorry about that that's my battery um, so just give me a second please okay now it's connected now Let's return back now. The title thing, okay. The title thing, you have to pass a string argument. So um, in C plus plus or C sharp or any programming language, you would actually write it within double quotation. But awkwardly in MATLAB, you will pass it in a single quotation. I don't know why, but this is how it works. So let's call it what? It was x of n sequence. So let's write x of n sequence. Now a good question is, um, how are we able to draw? an x of n without actually having the x axis uh, variable so you could see that I when I'm drawing I'm drawing uh, the, the the vertical axis which is x against the the uh, horizontal axis which is n and we only declared the y axis we did not declare the x axis so that's part of the drawing because as I said earlier when you are when you want to stem or you want to draw you at least have to pass one argument but if you are willing to actually control the uh, horizontal axis as well, you will just create another vector and, and call it n in this case, and you pass to it the, uh, the, the uh, vertical vector. But we don't want to do that. We just want to draw something simple. So that's why I just I created one vector, which represents the values 2, 3, uh, 4, and, and 6. And of course, here we have 5, right? So that's why I didn't go through the hustle. So that would be more than enough in, in case of a discrete. Of course, if you want to do continuous, you have to do to actually um, define the horizontal axis as well. So now um, that, that's, that's about it. So yeah, that's a title. And uh, when you run it again, you would see that X of N as a sequence. And if you want to add some sort of labeling to tell that this horizontal axis is it's just the N, so you would just add a comma again and x label and of course you have to add a string so let's put it in a single quotation for some reason MATLAB is using it like that so that's an n that's an n so now you could see this this n over here now uh, we are done drawing the first sequence so what I would do is I will draw the impulse response of a system so what I would do is I would copy this and, and paste it in my notepad because later on I will use it now what I would do is is actually I need to draw this impulse response of a system and this impulse response of a system you could see that has the values of 2 2 2 2 2 so five fives of twos right so it's quite easy so what I would do is I would write an H over here so that's a 2 a 2 and a 2 and a 2 
which is kind of like a, a unit step um, scaled up by two, right? That's that's it. And the step scaled up by two. Then I'm not going to be stemming or drawing uh, X. I'll be stemming the edge. And it's, the title is not X of N. It's just the impulse response. So I'll write here the impulse response. I don't know if it's an S or a C. So uh, impulse response H of N. And the label will be N as well. So and that's it. This is how you draw things. Now, what I would do now is basically I will combine both of them. But the thing is, uh, when you are basically, all right, so let's combine them. So I will actually add this x over here. So now I have a vector x and a vector h. Now, when you want to draw, you can see that we cannot simply draw x and h like by, by saying x and h like that. This is not going to work because it's actually... Um, drawing one graph but what if we, what we want to do is we actually need to split the window so this means what this means I have two graphs which is X and H in order to draw at least two graphs underneath each other I need to split the window because so far I only have this window I only have this sheet white sheet so what if I manage to split this sheet into two parts on top I will be drawing the X of N and on at the bottom I'll be drawing h of n so I could do that using a built-in function called a subplot so here is how it works so first of all let me take this and put it in here because I need to uh, I need that later on so now I have the vectors x and I have the vector h so I need to do some sort of subplotting and since I have two graphs I have to sp I have to actually divide it into two parts into two sections so I would write subplot then the subplot you have to pass three arguments M N, and P now the M represents the numbers of rows N represents the numbers of columns P represents the, the position so what does that mean Ro numbers of rows numbers of columns so this means what this means how do I want to partition my window so in our case we have two graphs which is basically the x of n and h of n. Do I want to draw them underneath each other or beside each other? Underneath each other means I have two rows and one column. I have two rows and a single column. So since I have two rows, I will write two rows and a single column. Then I want to draw which one first? I want to draw the x. So I want to draw it in the first position. So this p represents the position. So I have to write one, which is the first position. Then uh, will actually subplot the X which is basically what we have done here or actually stem or actually since we are not gonna draw a continuous signal we are drawing a discrete so we have to use stem X so I will stem X and I'll put the grid and everything so this is what I'm doing right now so I'll cut this and paste it over here so what I'm saying is I'll be stemming X adding grid the title or whatever and I'm gonna put all that in the first position the first position of what of a kind of like a sectioned um, drawing of two rows and one column right now what I would do is I in order to access the so now if I run this now you could see that I actually managed to split the gray window into two parts and I've managed to put the first graph in the first section how do I know that it's in the first section by this one so this means what if I wrote here in the second position and you can see that it's basically drawn here so now you know what what's going on so let's put it in the first position again now I managed to successfully draw my input in in the first section now in order to access the second section I will do something similar to what I've done for so far so I will again write a subplot then um, I will be writing the same way which is basically two rows and one column because if you wrote it in a different kind of way you will confuse the compiler of MATLAB then now I will, I will not be writing the first position I'll be writing the second position and in the second position I will not be stemming um, X I will not be drawing X I'll be drawing what I'll be drawing the edge which is the impulse response right and now I'll be drawing now you could see that we have the X and the H 
<coughs> but the problem here basically what we want is we want to draw even the convolution which is y of n which is the convolution between x of n and h of n so this means we need we don't just need two rows we need three rows and one column right so for that that's quite easy so instead of two rows we need, we need three rows three rows and one column which is quite good so now we now run this i have a third um, empty position so an empty position so that we could put the output y in y of n in it so now what is left is to compute the y of n so to compute the y of n let's use the built-in function so pay close attention to what i'm about to do now i have a vector x and i have a vector h so i need to com I actually need to have a vector y so i'm not going to actually compute the y um, which is basically the convolution of x and h manually i'll use a built-in function i'll utilize a built-in function in matlab to help me out which is a convolution so c o n v and you open up the parentheses and the intellicent will show you that we have at least we have to we have to pass at least two uh, kind of parameters u and v and as i mentioned earlier this is kind of bold so you have to pass two vectors right so we have to pass the first vector which is basically the x and the second vector which is the h which basically represents the input of a system and the impulse response of a system so i will pass the x and i'll pass the um, the h right and once i do that i and i run it let's close that you could see that in the workspace i have the output in the form of a vector so now i could easily draw that so what i would do is i would actually again subplot subplot and sorry subplot then to access the third position i have to again to tell matlab that we already sectioned the window into three parts into um, yeah three parts three rows and one column and i want to draw in the third position so now i will stem what i will stem the y right and let's put a grid it's, it's actually um and it's actually optional to put a grid this this kind of command is optional it's up to you now let's put a title in a typo now um, the title now what i would put in a title that this is the the output y of n which is equal to x of n convolved convolved with h of n as simple as that so the output y of n is a convolution of x of n with h of n so x of n convolved with h of n convolved this is the convolution kind of a thing and let's put a y label this is kind of optional so what i would do now instead of putting labels everywhere i mean putting label over here label over here label over there over here i'll just put a label down there and that is basically should look sufficient so instead of putting a label everywhere and here's what i mean by a label everywhere so if i put labels everywhere here you will see like three labels so okay for now let's leave it for, for the time being let me show you what's going on first so let's run this now you could see that we have x of n h of n and the output y of n which is basically a convolution between x of n and h of n right and yeah that, that's about it but you could see that we have n n n so if you want to actually to actually mention one label which is this n and get rid of these two this is what i would like to do to, to look more professional so i don't need to put label everywhere right so this label is unnecessary and this label is unnecessary as well so now if i run this you could see that this is x of n sequence this is impulse response of a system h of n and this is the output y of n which is a convolution between x of n and h of n and of course uh, on the horizontal axis we have n for everyone right so yeah uh, that, that that's about it right the, there's nothing nothing fancy about it so instead of computing convolution in a in a kind of confu in a kind of like uh, complex in a kind of like complicated way i just um uh, i just simply uh, use the built-in function to comp to help me do that so yeah uh, that, that's about it guys um, um i really hope that you enjoyed what, what's going on here i really hope you understood so uh, if you really enjoyed what you've seen so give me a, a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe see you guys